Okay, um, welcome to the first video of the on-site site site, uh, uh, site visit kind of exercise. Um, this is uh, uh, an exercise in joint uh, exercise between the University of South Australia, University of New South Wales, and the University of Western Sydney, and the University of Adelaide. Um, and what you're looking at is a virtual uh, site, which we'll spend a little bit of time exploring here. Uh, it's intended to act as a form of uh, a site visit that you would do in real life, but uh, where in real life um, oftentimes getting to sites can prove difficult uh, for some people, and certainly difficult if uh, large numbers of people want to visit a site. What we've done is provided a uh, simulation of what it would be like if you were to visit uh, a, a construction of a simple domestic house. Now, once you've downloaded uh, the software or you've accessed it uh, on in the pools, wherever you've managed to get, get to this point, um, the first thing you should know if you've never used uh, uh, an environment such as this is that your, uh, your left click uh, just to get started and that'll give me an active viewport now and then following that you can use the mouse to just pan around and have a look at uh, the site that you're in it's a lovely day um, and using the W, A and S, D keys W to go forward, S to go backwards, A to go sideways left, D sideways right you can navigate your way all around uh, around the, the environment. Um, you'll notice that the environment is closed, meaning though you may be tempted to, you can't wander off to some kind of other part of the suburb, um, because we want you to just focus on what's going on in the site itself. Now, one of the first things it's important to, I guess, know about uh, doing a site visit is that there's just in the, uh, what we tried to emulate uh, is all of the kind of conditions that would be uh, relevant to what you need to know learning uh, construction. So what you'll see as you pan around is uh, a boundary fence which is fairly typical, some sandbagging to prevent uh, materials uh, uh, escaping into adjoining properties, um, places for waste, uh, some vehicles which are part of the, the builders kind of uh, fleet, um, a space for materials and uh, uh, refuse as you can see here and at the front is security fence. Uh, now it's important for sites to be kept secure uh, at all times. Uh, there are issues to do with uh, insurance, site insurance and to do with occupation, health and safety which means that a builder has to assume liability for the um, for the site for the course of the uh, construction period. Um, if we look over to the right hand side here towards the um, towards the uh, corner of the site you'll notice there's a small peg tapped into the ground and that peg is one of the surveyor's pegs who, uh, and that's used to nominate where the uh, location of the boundary is uh, for the site and then all other measurements uh, can be taken from that in order to um, create uh, an appropriate and accurate uh, set out for the uh, building project. Um, Buildings, domestic buildings such as these, of course, are governed by um, council regulations and uh, uh, building regulations to do with setbacks from seats, uh, streets, sorry, and uh, adjoining properties. And this building, as you see when you look at the uh, drawings associated with it, uh, is no different. Uh, just in front of us here as well is a uh, temporary uh, three-phase electricity pole. Um, power is supplied to the site uh, for the builder. Uh, which is paid, metered and paid for by the builder for the process of the uh, construction only. Of course, when the, the occupier uh, takes takes a possession of the property, um, the local electricity authority will connect them up to the grid, and they'll they'll have a uh, have their own obligations for power. So this is just a temporary measure so that for the builder to be able to use power tools, etc., whilst uh, constructing the building. Now if we go and have a look at the actual set out itself, you can see there are a number of timber hurdles. Uh, now these are used to mark out the uh, lines, uh, set out lines for the perimeter of the slab. Um, and you can see that there are spray painted um, uh, markings on the ground which we'll have a bit of a look at in a minute. In essence that gives a kind of, uh, it appears rough but it's generally in practice quite accurate idea of the overall uh, scale of the of the trenching necessary for the footings and then the slab 
which we'll see in a subsequent uh, video and, and environment. Um, looking at uh, these, as I say, these timber hurdles, you'll notice that they're set up uh, just to pick up the, the perimeter of the slab itself. Now, to the right hand side, you can see here there's a um, trench. Now, this trench would be uh, for, in this instance, for the sewage. Sewage and uh, sewage is separate from stormwater. We'll have a look at the stormwater trench in a minute. And in essence, what it does is it picks up all of the waste that comes from these uh, plumbing inverts that you can see here. This is the plumber's first fix where they would come in, dig all the trenches, lay the piping uh, pipes that go underneath uh, the ground subgrade, uh, and then place uh, inverts which then come up through the slab uh, once it's poured and connect into the various fixtures and fittings. So right in front of us here we have what appears to be, I guess, the bathroom. There'd be a floor waste, a bath, a shower, and a, um, a hand basin, I assume. Uh, over here, in the middle, towards the centre of the house, is a waste for the kitchen, for the kitchen sink, and then towards the rear here, there is the uh, three more inverts for um, the uh, for a possibly a washing machine, a hand basin, and uh, something else. I'm not sure. Now you notice that all three of these uh, will join up in the trenches and are then kind of sent out to um, the store to the waste system towards the front of the property. Now if we pan around and have a look at this other trench which is running around the perimeter of the house. In essence uh, this one would be for um, picking up the storm water. So all the water that lands on the roof comes into uh, the downpipes and then connects into the storm water pipes, travels around the perimeter of the house and again is fed out towards where the storm water uh, collection would be. Now the, this particular trench is not finished, it would go all the way to the front of the property uh, where the um, storm water is collected. Now you'll notice uh, when we look at the markings that are on the ground here, you can see that uh, they've been s they've been set out reasonably accurately. Um, if we uh, move around a little bit though and have a look, we can see there's a, there's a couple here that don't uh, match up. So I'll just move it so it's not so glary. They don't match up, and so there's obviously an issue here to do with um, the set out on on the ground. And this would have to the idea, of course, is that the um, the lines all do meet up, form a continuous perimeter, because in this current instance we don't know where uh, the slab is meant to finish. So this is a possibly an inaccuracy in the set out. Um, looking around and doing what you would do if you were doing a site visit, just to check that everything was okay. We notice here too that there's some soil that's come up into the the trench for the uh, storm water. So it's actually fairly important that. Um, pipes are laid at the correct grade so that they gravity uh, feed out to wherever they need to go. So um, uh, the placing pipe work at the correct depth so that it can have sufficient fall from the back of the site to the front of the site is quite important. Okay, now as we progress through this series and we look at uh, a number of other uh, versions of the site, you'll notice how the site, the house actually grows and the next stage, the laying of the slab and then the provision of the wall and wall framing and finally the um, the uh, 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 roof framing, etc. will show you a whole series of um, different aspects of the construction process itself. So hopefully you found this informative, hopefully it's given you something to uh, think about when you're undertaking the quiz. Uh, that is part of the, the module, certainly for the UniSA students. Um, and yeah, see you in the next one.